I don't really like to cover stories that you can find anywhere else because it, it doesn't really add much value because there's, a, there's, you know, there's 10 other guys talking about the guys and gals talking about the same thing. I, I like to separate myself to bring information that uh, you can't get anywhere else. Hey everybody, Rob Stone here with the Side Hustle, Side Hustle. I think we're up over 20 episodes now, and I got a great guest on board today. A guy I met online, watches Instagram stuff, uh, the P. Romaine show, and I had to tell you, I was thrown off a bit. I thought it was a pro main show, but it's P. Romaine for Phil, and uh, all the way from Toronto today, uh, honoring us with his presence to come on, tell us all about the P. Romaine show uh, why he got into it, what he's doing on the side to, you know, generate a, a side hustle income, how he's going to monetize this thing. That's what we talk about. We talk to business owners and aspiring entrepreneurs. So, Phil, thanks a million, man, for coming on. No problem. And uh, I do have to say you were originally correct. It is the ProMain show. It is, but... Uh, it is the ProMain show. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, again, yeah. I, I have been corrected and that is official now, of course. No, because... no, you, already, you had it correct in the beginning. That's it. So, yeah. Stick with your first instincts. Eh? In business, exactly. always always go with your hunch. That's right. But yeah, it's good to be with you. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. So how do you open up all your videos? I know, but I'm going to let you uh, open open up with uh, the same way you introduce all of your uh, Instagram reels. Well, yeah. Um, I always start with, let me bring you up to speed. And um, that's pretty much what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bring people up to speed on everything that's going on. Uh, many different aspects of world news and current events and been doing it for a little while now uh, since COVID hit and it's been working out pretty well. That's awesome. Up over uh, how many subscribers now on Instagram? Well, I have uh, 86,000 followers on Instagram yeah. um, and that's predominantly where my followers are at. I had like 50,000 on TikTok, but uh, that account was unfortunately suspended. So Wow. Yeah. Couldn't, they couldn't took it down why. and then they gave it back to me with zero followers. I could <laughs> not imagine why. Well, that must oh, be heart, heartbreaking. No, no, hey. it's totally fine. Totally fine. That's part of, um, that's all part of it, right? So that, uh, fortunately, that's not what drives me. What You could take away all of my followers tomorrow on Instagram. I'm still going to do what I'm doing. And then the followers, they, they may come, they may not come, but I have a purpose and I'm fulfilling that. And I'm just trying to get it out to as many people as possible. So and great, great, uh, I guess, news you're bringing to us. I mean, I, I watch your reels all the time. It's something pertinent to what's going on in the world. And I heard a great analogy by Simon Sinek, you know, the great orator who's uh, got one of the you know most watched TED Talks, the, the power of why or, you know, the why, why, mm. how analogy. Yep. But he yeah. talked about uh, one of the greatest orators of all time was Martin Luther King. And he made an analogy. He said, how could Martin Luther King lure 250,000 people to the Washington Monument when nobody put him in the newspaper? There was no internet. Nobody put him on the six o'clock news. How did the word get out? And it was because he had a you know a great mission. His yeah. mission right, was to make sure. everybody equal. Uh, on the planet. So I think you have a great mission. Did you, did you actually uh, orate uh, your mission or put it in writing somewhere or are you, are you just on a, on your yeah. sole proclaimed mission? No, I have. I have put it down. It's what I've been working on uh, recently, actually. I'm going to launch my website in October and um, it includes my mission statement. It includes an about me section, like a short bio. And it's a way for people to find me should I ever lose the Instagram. It's my it's my domain. It's registered from Florida. So even if Canada goes in some weird direction where they start having their online commissioner and they decide that they want to go after people who they label as misinformation, they still can't touch my website because it's registered in Florida. But I do have a mission statement on there and it's elaborate, but uh, I, I guess I can sum it up. I mean, there's really two. You heard it here first, folks, on the Side Hustle, Side Hustle podcast. <laughs> That's right. Well, I mean, my the mission of, of the Pro Main Show is to bring easily verifiable news that is hidden. So I use all reputable sources. I use sources that are verified, but people haven't heard of the stories because the press, they can cover something, but if they don't shine a light on it, nobody's going to know. It'll get lost on in the it'll get lost in the stories. So 
in a way they still cover themselves because like it's like hey you know we covered it but we didn't bring anybody's attention to it so that's what i do my mission basically is to articulate stories to the public that are easily verifiable yet hidden uh, essential information and that's and also entertain them right i try to give them even if it's bad news i try to i try to make people laugh you know at least once in a video no matter how serious the topic is um that's something that i do because you know I, i'm an entertainer by background i was doing music before so this is a very transferable skill for me are you still but doing yeah. music what's what's your uh what's your music background <laughs> well, tell us a I, little bit about it i don't know if you can see the uh the fender stratocaster behind me there we go just like but, jimmy uh, played didn't yeah. he play one of those I do. I do. Oh, I do Jimmy, play. Jimmy Hendrix played one. Oh, he did. Yeah, we, he's, he's my favorite of, of all time. Jimi Hendrix, Billy Cogan, and um, David Gilmore from Pink Floyd. Those are my three top. Uh, I, only, I only knew Jimi Hendrix played one of those because I saw it on Pawn Stars. Somebody was uh, bringing uh, Jimi Hendrix yeah. uh, original guitar into, yeah. into Pawn Off. The Fender Strat. So yeah, I still do make music on the side. Um, I may release it when the time comes but the music that i'm going to be releasing is very much in line with uh what i'm doing with my videos anyways it's going to be you know having to do with the world situation politics uh it's going lyrics, to be a song lyrics lyrics will be tied into uh oh, yeah. issues 100 100 percent. amazing you know, there's no more powerful weapon than music right but uh it takes time to get there so i've just been focused on this growing my audience and then I might just drop a surprise uh, song on them sometime soon. And uh, it's, I've actually said that here first as well. So nobody, nobody really knows that I make music on my, uh, on my channel. I, I haven't revealed that to anybody. You heard it here first on the side hustle, <laughs> side hustle. That's, that's going to be my new tagline. You heard yeah, it here first. You heard it here first. Yeah. That's right. So things they don't tell you, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So you talked about, uh, you know, Rolling into COVID, I know you work in the uh, health industry. So rolling into COVID, it was a big change for everybody. Is that what is that when you launched the Pro Main show, or did it start out before COVID, or was it kind of a reaction based uh, launch? It it started around. Uh, it started during COVID, basically. Uh, I started first uploading, and I called the show COVID True. That's what I called it first, and it was just specifically about COVID. Uh, and information that the government that was giving us that was not correct. And um, that's how it started. And then um, somewhere around a year in the beginning of 2021, I just changed it to the ProMain show because I felt like it was time to focus on more than just COVID. I was done with COVID by the end of 2020. I was tired talking about it. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm liking this direction. Let's cover current events and world news. A lot of us uh, were done with COVID before COVID. Exactly. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, exactly. So uh, in 2021, I, I uploaded the first episode, Pro Main Show episode one. It was still on YouTube at the time. And I had been doing everything on YouTube. And then I made the switch into TikTok in the spring of uh, 2021. And that just blew up. People it liked me more on the short format, format content. And it did really well. And then uh, I moved into Instagram as well about, a year, about two years later, uh, 2023. And then Instagram blew up. And at the same time Instagram blew up, TikTok was taken away. So where one door closes, another one opens, right? So that's the scoop. That's how I got started with ProMain Show. And uh, I don't think I'm going to be stopping. No, I, I would not stop. I'd say you're on a pretty good roll. You've got lots of followers. I mean, I really like your stuff. Uh, some you. of us can't speak out as much as you. So we're living vicariously through Phil Romain. Let's just put it yeah, down. Yeah, that's amazing. So. Uh -huh. You know, I, I liked you so much. I invited you out to the ball game in Toronto last year, and we, we got yeah, another one great. coming up here. So we're going to have another uh, encounter together, do a couple more shorts, have some Can't fun wait. with it. Uh, that's what business is all about, is camaraderie, helping each other, you know, each other get ahead. But you you didn't start this because you wanted to make money off it. You did it because you you wanted your voice to be heard. And, and of course, with COVID starting, but I think COVID really lifted the veil off yeah. of government conspiracy theories it yeah lifted the blew the can or the top right off it and and i believe that's what a lot of your videos do are like you said that the mainstream media doesn't want to dig deep into some of these issues or they brush them aside and it's not all bad news that you're uh no giving giving your audience it's, it's just the news and that's the way it should be i believe yeah absolutely 100 percent. yeah so we're, we're i mean how do you decide 
uh, let's do a couple part question here. Let's make uh, Phil work a little bit here for his exposure <laughs> on the side hustle show. Um, what stories do you decide to put on? And, you know, once you decide to put one on, how much work is involved in the background? Because there's a lot of people here that are inspired by you, want to start their own YouTube channel, their own uh, Instagram reels. You know, how much, so how do you decide which stories? Again, it's under the same uh, concept. But then how long from concept to finish a product? Well, um, it depends on the video. I find the average uh, from research to shooting to the script. When I say script, like I'm referring to what's written in the description. Oftentimes I don't write a script when I shoot, but I've been starting to do that. But anyways, uh, from research to the time that you finish shooting the video to editing to coming up with your what we call hooks. The hook is basically what's going to make people watch from the beginning to the end. You want people to watch as much as your video as possible because um, that's a signal for the algorithm that they want to send your uh, video out to more people because if they, because they're the job of the social media uh, companies is to keep people on their app. So if they see that a video is keeping people on the app and there's lots of watch time, they're going to promote you. So coming up with a hook is often just as important as the whole video itself because if nobody's going to watch it, what's the point, right? So coming up with that, it's about, I would say, 8 to 12 hours. Um, a lot of the times it ends up being 12 hours for me because I like to take my time to make things, to do things properly. So you have to balance between consistency and quality. But yeah, uh, how do I decide which stories to to feature? That's a very difficult process sometimes because I'll come across maybe... 50 to 100 stories before I decide which one is the most important one to shine a light on. And there's different things that I do to decide what story meets that mark. And one thing is simply how many people are talking about it. If it's not well covered, then that's, you know, that already meets a lot of the criteria for me. I don't really like to cover stories that you can find anywhere else because it, it doesn't really add much value because there's, a, there's, you know, there's 10 other guys talking about the guys and gals talking about the same thing. I, I like to separate myself to bring information that uh, you can't get anywhere else. Fresh stuff. That, yeah. So, but that has its challenges because um, obviously you have to find those stories and then you have to find. A, and a you have to get it done and you have to get it out in 12 hours before the next uh, news channel or, you know, YouTuber does. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then you have to find credible sources that are covering stories that are much, that are very unknown. How and, big is um, the uh, how big is the pro main show team? Is it, am I looking at it? There's or? no there's no team. There needs to be. You're looking at it. There needs to be more because there because it would help me to be more efficient. But um, I I'm doing the whole thing by myself in this room in my you know my bachelor apartment, Midtown Toronto, and uh, the studio, just, the pro main show studio, the studio, yeah, the, the pro main show studio. That's right. Awesome. That sounds better. I think I like that. Welcome to yeah. the pro main show Midtown Studio. Yeah. So that is it. Yeah. Um, you know, that's pretty much what happens. I mean, I, I go across so many stories, but um, that's pretty much my my process of deciding what gets selected and how long it takes to, to put it out. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a full time job. It really is. It is um, a lot of work. You you met some of our team, I, I guess, in the waiting room there coming on to the yeah. show. Two, two of them are in the Philippines and we couldn't do it without the help. Once you once you hit a certain size, you have to bring help on. But that's where that's when you start monetizing. So what's that's part of I know your plan. We talked about it, you know, chatting a bit before the uh, recording today. So what yeah. is uh, are you able to let the cat out of the bag on your domain? And I'm not pressuring you yeah. if you want to do a big reveal, but we can share that on oh, on the podcast and the it. notes. Yeah, yeah, we can talk about that right now. Uh, I mean, it's it's pretty much imminent. Uh, in, a, in a few weeks, I'll be launching. I'm just finishing up a few a few products so uh basically the way i plan to really monetize uh the channel well i started really monetizing last year when you have a certain amount of followers uh, sometimes companies will come to you for brand deals right now for what i'm doing not a lot of companies come to me because i'm doing politics and news and naturally speaking a lot of brands don't want to touch that because it's controversy right and i i pretty much work in in controversy uh, so it's hard to get brand deals, but I have had a few uh, last year. I had around three different companies that I worked with and I did quite well. It was a new experience for me selling, you know, online and getting people to buy these products and 
and uh, delivering for these companies who had hired me. Um, so I, I, I was doing a brand deal with a company called, this is one of them called the Wellness Company. And um, basically that, that went really well. It was a good experience. It showed me that I know I have a very engaged audience and I can sell, right? Uh, but for me, based upon my research, the way that influencers, they call them influencers or people with a large online following, the way you monetize that, the best way is not brand deals. The best way is selling your own product. And then brand deals is somewhere around the second or third way to make the most money. Unfortunately, living in Canada, I don't get paid just based off of views. If I was living in the United States, I would actually just get paid based on the amount of views I get, which would be sweet. Because, I mean, last year alone, I, I probably got racked up about 20 million views, uh, Twenty somewhere between 20 to 30 million views combined from last year. What if, what if Phil, your channel is owned by a US LLC, Limited Liability Corporation? Could it then monetize the views? Well, yeah. I, you know, honestly... Uh, this is the second time I've heard that. And the first time I heard it was from you when we went out to the ball game. And so yeah. you've, you've reminded me of that. I really do want to do that. So I think that that's something that I'm going to probably look into just to, uh, just I, I to, have um, just the guys, I have just the guys for you in the U S I, I think they would, they would not great. be opposed to working with you and just got off a call with them the other day, actually. Amazing. So let's, let's do that on the follow-up. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Cause you want to, um, you, you know, you want to uh, spread out the efforts as much as you can, but what I'm focused on now, what I've been working on was my own product, right. Which is just merch. Basically. I have a lot of um, uh, cash phrases from the, from the show that people have asked me They're like, Hey man, you should put some t-shirt. And I'm like, I never really listened too much because money was never really the, the priority. Right. Was it the motivator. It wasn't the motivator. Right. But there comes a point in time in which it kind of, it kind of has to take precedence because how else would I keep the show going, right? Um, when you go to work for, you know, you go put your time um, 40, to 40, a, a 50 company, hours a week. You, yeah. you have to get paid eventually, right? Otherwise, it's not sustainable, right? I've dipped into my savings. I've gone through all of that just to focus all and give this my full attention. Typical um, startup. So, yeah. So, that's, so why, time to, that's why we got you on the show because you're a hustler. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. It's, it's allowed me to meet people like you. And it's that that is something more valuable to me than than money. Right. So, yeah, but uh, I'm going to sell the merch. So things like let me bring you up to speed. I uh, bet they didn't talk about this on your five o'clock news. And I have some other like political sayings because I know a lot of people um, like to, you know, have Which, political uh, sayings. Look, on at, their shirts. look at look at trademarking those. Let me bring you up to speed. And I did. I did you... actually look at trademarking it. Um, uh, it's something called the Madrid Protocol. And I think you you register with the Madrid Protocol and it covers like a hundred plus countries. So I'm looking at that. I'm actually I want to do that too. I want to trademark it. Um, but yeah, I've been going through the whole whole process, um, designing the the clothes, uh, procuring it, find, you know the quality, going through everything. It was a whole how new much, experience. How to much make fun sure. is that? How much? Oh, it's fun. That, it, right? It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And uh, I've been working with uh, somebody who I used to work with when I was making music. He was my graphic designer. So now we're we're doing this instead. So that's just about ready to go. And I have a bunch of products for men and women and merch. And, uh, you know, we got mugs and hats, sweaters and uh, some gym gear. And yeah, I'm going to I'm going to launch that soon. And I've been working on kind of like a movement. I'm not going to reveal the name of the movement yet that I will do a big reveal on. Um, but it's basically something that people can coalesce around to to feel like they can make a difference when you come across these stories. One of the things that I like to focus on is what can we do about it? I don't just like to talk about the problems. I like to, to try to solve them. So, for instance, when the Bank of Canada was doing a centralized uh, central bank digital currency, they were uh, they were canvassing the public to see what people thought. I actually got around 400 Canadians to, to go online, fill out the the um, what the Bank of Canada was looking for. And when they released their reports months later, questionnaire, was, it was it was there. My numbers were there. And um I thought to myself, I was like, well, wow, I, I'm actually responsible for 1%, 1 to 2% of the feedback that they got nationwide was people that I sent there because they Amazing. give you the exact numbers from the cities and everything like that. And, and I said to myself, well, this is the point of what, what we're doing is we want to feel empowered to, to do something about what's going on. So the whole movement is to make people feel powerful, like they're part of something like once you get this information, your job is to not your job, but if you want. You, you spread the information and uh, the power of the tongue, right? The power of the tongue is just to speak out is like the most powerful weapon we have. So yeah, that's going to come alongside with the catchphrases and political uh, sayings from the show that I'm going to be up. Uh, I, I like the uh, the catchphrases on the t-shirt. Remind me of a 
website, which might inspire you a little bit. It's called T-Shirt Hell. T-Shirt Hell? T-ShirtHell.com. Okay, yeah, T-Shirt Hell, you got to look at them. And I, right. I I don't know what they're probably doing, 100,000, 200,000 T-Shirts a month. Yeah, I mean, that's... But we'll that's all they have. Goes, but that is definitely the goal. That, that's definitely awesome. the goal is to, to get it out there. Awesome. So let's go back before COVID. You talked about, you know, launching the channel. The Pro Main Show started off as an anti-COVID medical channel because you're in the health industry. Let's go back before that. Any other side hustles growing up? Did you have a newspaper route? How did you get inspired to to really start, uh, you know, a business? It's evolved into a business, but did you always have that bug inside you to try and start something on your own? Yeah, well, it's interesting that you asked that. I was talking to my girlfriend about this the other week because I remembered it. I was like 12 or 13, and um, I was helping elderly people from my building uh, take out the trash for $2 a bag, something like that. And so every Tuesday I would go and see a few people on different floors and they would give me like four bucks. Right. So, but it was, it ended, it ended up being like 30 bucks a week and I saved up that money. And this was like when I was like 13 and I remember I just saving up the money and I would buy like my favorite show at the time was a show called Dragon Ball Z. So I would like use it to buy, to, to get some of that because I wasn't able to get money for my mom. Right. So I had to, I had to, to, uh, to get my money myself. You had the hustle. Uh, so, yeah, so that was fun. And I thought about it years later. I was like, wow, that was really studious. Like for me to be thinking like that at like 12, 13, like that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Like that's interesting. So yeah, that's where it all really started for me uh, when it comes to hustling. Um, and then, you know, of course, like my first job actually was a newspaper boy, as I'm sure it was a lot of people. And yeah, I've been working like since I was like 16, just different jobs and stuff like that. But when it came to running my own business, I would say that all really started for me probably with music. Because when I was trying to uh, seriously start putting out music seriously, I was around 22. And, uh, you know, I registered my business. Um, it was called National Defense Records. And uh, basically, I went through the whole process of, of having a spreadsheet expenses. Um, you know, I got information from my brother as well. And, um, yeah, just writing off stuff every year. So I, that's, that was in business from 2013. I would say I still write it off but I'm changing the name this year actually to National Defense Entertainment because I feel like National Defense Records speaks for music and I feel like this is a better umbrella, National Defense Entertainment. So yeah, I, that all started for me in 2013. I was doing that as a business and really understanding the ins and outs of trying to be an entrepreneur and really how, how hard it is, how tough it is in the beginning. Because um, I wanted to find out, how, I wanted to do everything on my own. Um, you do need a team, but I, it's important to know as an artist anyways at the time, it's important to know how to get your songs on the radio, you know, how to get uh, yourself a tour in Europe, because a lot of the artists I knew were getting jerked around by managers who ended up taking thousands from them because they didn't know how to get their music on Spotify or on Apple Music and they got royalties stolen. So those experiences have really helped me to know what I'm doing now um, with, with, with this. And last year was really cool because I opened up for the first time I started writing invoices, you know, National Defense Entertainment. Give an invoice to the wellness company. Give an invoice to some of the other uh, businesses that I that hired me to to promote for them, and that was a really cool experience. Like having an HST number, uh, making an invoice. I use Square invoices; they're dope. This is not a plug for them. I just like them. And um, <laughs> yeah, we can bleep that out. We can bleep yeah, yeah. that out. Yeah, yeah, we can bleep that out. Hey, but uh, QuickBooks. Like, I guess Sam Sam Bankman Freed when they had that whole crypto uh, scandal, yeah. right? I remember the, the U.S. Congress hearing, they were talking, one of the guys testifying was saying, I can't believe this company was using QuickBooks, you know, a billion <laughs> dollar company, and they were using QuickBooks. That's great. And that's not <laughs> a plug for QuickBooks. That's some we'll free advertisement bleep. for them too, right? Yeah, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll have to bleep that one out as well. That's fine. Yeah, so I'll bring it back. Uh, so yeah, and I was using invoices. So the whole experience of, of putting my price on an invoice and sending it out and getting paid, that was good. So I love being an entrepreneur. I love working for myself and I consider it to be working for the people really, because I'm, I'm, when I get up at nine, I started treating this like a full-time job last year. I stopped working for the hospital full-time and I decided to work for myself and for the people. To pay bring pay attention news. here, folks, pay attention because Phil's dropping the gold here. Yeah. Treat it like a full-time job. I've heard absolutely. that phrase so many times in all the online business workshops, yeah. et cetera. I woke up, I wake up, make my breakfast, and by 9 a.m., 8.30, 9 a.m., 
I sit down right here with my coffee and I'm, I'm looking for stories. Which story am I going to bring people today? And my job every day is to bring one new story at least. It was, it was one video a day. And it's hard to do. But I was when I was doing it at peak, I was doing around uh, four videos a week, four to five. It's like rare to reach five a week, but at least three to four a week. And it was working out great. And it still is. So there's nothing more fulfilling than having a purpose. Sometimes it takes people a longer time to, to find out what they want to do. Happens at different ages. But once you have that, I think that, you know, North America was really built on entrepreneurs and having your own business. And that's just how I want to live. And it's, yeah, you take a hit yeah, at the beginning, can, but it's worth it. You can spend your whole life uh, helping build someone else's dream or spend a few years uh, building your own and, and then you're set for life. Exactly. Exactly. And it's not easy, but cliches, the, right? Cliches, but they're true. Hmm? Cliches, but they're true. Yeah, it's true. Awesome. Very true. So what's next? You're launching your, your website so you can attract followers online. We'll make sure and get this out in our newsletter because we send a, a link out with the, each podcast guest to our newsletter reaches about 40,000 people. So let's get some eyeballs on the new launch, the new site, uh, new things that are coming, the, the cliche t-shirts. I got to order some of those. Uh, That's right. Because we have it, a collection. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's going to be uh, www.thepromainshow.com, thepromainshow.com. And that's probably going to be out sometime in, I think it's around the second week of October we're going to launch. And uh, the purpose of the website is not just merch. Um, it's also for people to be able to find me. It's my own place. And um, it, you'll find videos there. You'll find a weekly blog that I'll be putting up. And there'll be an email contact list for anybody who really wants to, you know, drop their email. They can be part of that broadcast channel. And so we can really create, like, this team together, you know. And, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that because I've been working on it for quite some time, quite some time. It took me a long time to figure out exactly how I'm going to, because I want to give people quality and I want to come up with something that means something. And um, you, so you, will, you will attract, you know, I, we work with a lot of businesses and we see a lot of people starting out, a lot of people getting to the point where you're at, you know, we're a little bit ahead of you, but the only thing we have on you is time. That's what I tell our clients, those that are starting out on their own. Eventually we see them grow. They bring on the right team members. They get rid of the wrong team members. Mm -hmm. you'll, you you will grow this into an empire. I have wow. no doubt whatsoever because you in since 2020, you've built this into, you know, what is it? A uh, half a million followers on all the channels combined. Not quite, but around a hundred thousand. Okay. Sorry. A hundred thousand, but you'll be at 500 K in no time. And I mean, you're doing all the right things, all these things you've done in the past, like building spreadsheets, keeping track of your expenses. It's yeah. important. Not, you don't have to go to school to be an accountant, but as long as you can understand the financial side, you you're off on the right foot because it's ninety percent of the reason why most people fail. They don't understand yeah. it. Yeah, so you got a good head start on that. How about collaborations? Have you collaborated with other people in, let's say, the uh, the industry? People on the same page as you, so to speak, giving yeah, the same I, stories. Yeah, I have um, a, a few times actually. Um, I did a a couple shows. There was one big show in the in the in the states um, that I did. And uh, actually, when I was just walking around down here, somebody was like, oh, I saw you on this podcast. So that was one. And uh, I did uh, with another, like another, someone also in the news space here. Her name's Carla. And shout out, shout out to Carla. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so about three or four collaborations, but I need to do that more. There's a lot of things that I need to focus on and give my energy to more. I've just been putting it all in one place right now. So I've, I've actually even taken a break a little bit on how much I posted just so I can get this right. So I can kind of revamp and relaunch things come October. So once I actually have this website ready to go, yeah, yeah, once I have the website ready to go and everything is very like organized, then I'm going to be doing like a lot of collaborations. I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be going, kicking into overdrive. Yeah. I saw a guy on a grow a phenomenal uh, reels He's an ex butcher. He calls himself the meat dad, the meat dad. And he huh. did this exact same path as you. He took, you know, his skill and he goes on showing people how to buy meat in bulk and carve it up in different ways to carve up meat. But he, he, he does it with a little bit of fun, but he started his own website, came out with his own merch, his merch is his own set of uh, custom carving knives for, ah. you know, doing it yourself. So it's all right. around the same thing, building your brand, building your yeah. following, finding products and services you can roll out to people so yeah you're definitely on the right path my man oh i think you're gonna love it man you're gonna love it i took my time to make it interesting 
not just words on a shirt, you know, like something people are like, hey, I got to have that, you know? So, yeah, that's why you got to check out T-Shirt Hell. I'm going to definitely they got, they got a little twist. You'll you'll catch the humor when you when you see some of them. And you know what? Nice. I'll give them a shout out because they, they have a great business. I tried finding out where they were. And I think for the main purpose of the type of T-shirts and the messages they put out, they probably print them in an undisclosed location. Let's just yeah. put it that way. Yeah, that makes that sense. <laughs> so what's, ne what's next for Phil? I mean, you got the website launching, you got your product and merch coming out. Where do you see it going and what's what's in the future? Well, I do have um, some plans for the future that I do have to keep under wraps because I kind of don't want, if I do have a set of people who are would consider themselves my opposition and would want to derail what I'm doing, I don't really want to let them know my next move. But let's just say I enjoy serving the public. That's what I have to say. And so I'm enjoying what I'm, what I, you know, this is, I'm going to rewind it a little bit back here. One of my weaknesses before, personally, was that I, I'm, my personality type is, is creative. I'm highly creative um, and I'm very open. And so I'm talented in a lot of different things. And one of my weaknesses was never being able to focus on one path. It was always split efforts, two things or three things at the same. And that wasn't particularly useful to me. Once I made a decision to sacrifice music, something that I was very good at and I was following and put all and even sacrifice work to really put everything into one path. I found that that worked for me. And I had read somewhere, you know, from some of these success moguls like these guys, they said that, you know, you want to go all in on one path at a time, like five years. It takes you five years to reach the top of anything if you put all of it into it. And they said it's, it's why so many people who are wealthy, you see them doing so many different things because they do it once at a time. So they do it five years, then they'll open up another business five years. And then usually that's like the goal, right? So that they describe it as your ship goes to one destination at a time. Well, they also so, say 10,000 hours, which is five years to full time. Exactly, 10,000 hours exactly. to become the expert in your field. Exactly. When you go to school for a diploma, it's four to five years, you know? So this, this mark is very important. Now I've been doing this for three years now. It, it started in 2020, but I didn't do it consistently. I was off and on again. I didn't sacrifice music until the beginning of 2023. And that's when things really blew up. I was, I was doing this and music at the same time and going to work full time. So I didn't actually go all in until 2023, but I still consider this to be my, coming up to the end of the to the end of the third year so two more years so basically my goal is to reach the the top of this sphere within the next two years meaning that you know i've got a million followers my website's doing well i'm established on the scene i'm i mentioned uh with guys like you know ben shapiro or you know people who are in the in the news space news and politics space that would be my goal there, right? What's what and space then, do you call that? That independent news channel? What is there a term for that space? Well, um, I, the, I think people the Ben Shapiro's and the yeah, yeah. People would describe it as well. For me, it's um, political commentator, right? So that would be like the term. If I was going to go on news, I would be called a political commentator. But I'm also a citizen journalist. Really, I, I wouldn't really call myself a journalist. I would call myself yeah, maybe citizen like citizen journalism. That's me. So. Ben Shapiro would be a conservative, like in the conservative news space. He's covering news every day, news and politics, and he's doing it with a conservative lens. Um, me, I do skew a little bit more conservative, but I would really consider myself to be like center independent. You know what I mean? But obviously everybody has their uh, their preferences, right? But for me, I, I'm not too caught up on labels. My, my, my main purpose is to bring people that are stories, stories that are unknown. But yeah, so once I reach the, the, my, my fifth year here, I'm going to ship into something else that I kind of want to keep under wraps because I don't want people to know where I'm going. But what I will reveal is that uh, you can expect some music from me um, probably some, sometime within the next year. Um, I'll start I'll start putting that putting that out too. So music and my website and the merch and continuing to be very, very consistent and really grow my channel is what's going to be the focus for me over the next two years. Yeah, but wait, there's more. You gotta follow, oh, you yeah. gotta follow up on the podcast because I'm sure Phil will let <laughs> us know as well. We're on your list. We'll make sure, sure you get all these all this breaking news. Um hundred percent. We we try and keep our, our podcast posts uh relevant and up to date. Like for example, 
uh, someone updated their website. So we went back in the post uh, in the podcast feeds and updated their website. So anything you have, and then we will send it out as well through our uh, newsletter, which we, we feature all our podcast guests in the newsletter as well. So I guess uh, having said all that, we always ask our guests uh, one main question. And that is, which I didn't tell you, unless you've watched our podcast is not to put you on the spot, but it's a simple one. I'm any book, question. any, no, any book or, or movie, uh, that you've read or that has inspired you to go to this next step in life, start this entrepreneurial journey. Have you read any book or heard any quotes or uh, a movie that has really inspired you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, uh, the book is, is right here. Uh, well, it's uh, Jordan Peterson's 10 Rules for Life. I know to a lot of people that might be typical, but it speaks to me individually. It helped me get through a time in my life that I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. That book really inspired me in a sense that it helped me to come up with a plan and a direction and to understand that life is a game and you might as well play it. It's a serious game. It's not all a game, but it's a game. Like Shakespeare says, we, the world is but a stage and we're, the men and women are but mere actors, right? You, if you're playing the game, you might as well play the biggest game that you can play. I think he said that in the book. So that book really is what it was one of the five things that really pushed me into going all into what I'm doing right now was reading that book and a movie that really pushed me into into this as well was um the darkest hour winston churchill i think it won best picture in 2017 my mom was always telling me to watch it watch it watch it. i wasn't really taking her on i'm a i'm a world war ii world war one buff i'm a history buff really but when i finally got around to watching that movie in um 2021 i believe it was that's when i was like oh man it's really going to push me into it really inspired me to to do what i'm doing now so that that's one movie and that's one book that have very much been a part of why i'm doing this and other than you know launching the website that's an act launching your merch that's an act but how about goals for example a million youtube subscribers you know yeah. 500,000 on instagram any any goals you've set for yourself uh yeah. Towards the end of this year or any goals you have on the horizon for 2025? Yeah, well, I, a really simple goal for me, like, okay, so my goal is to reach 100,000 followers before I release a song. So that I told that to my friend at the beginning of last year before I even had any followers on Instagram. And I said, I'm not, I, I refuse to release another song unless I have 100,000 followers because I feel like I'm putting out music to nobody. And instead of putting oh, all this money. Click, click the link in the description. Let's follow. Uh, that's Home right. Show on Instagram, and we'll that's right. up all the other links on there. So let's get them to a hundred thousand, so we can we we can exactly get a release of that song. That, that is so. That's the first goal, and that's coming close because I'm at eighty five thousand, and I've kind of taken a break online so I can focus again on the website and everything. But um, oh, can you still see me? Yeah, we got you loud and clear. Okay, great, great. So that's the first goal, and the second goal is to get to a million um, followers on Instagram or whatever my primary social is, um, whether it's X, but right now it's really Instagram. And they, they've been good to me. Me personally, they have not taken down any of my, my videos because I, I make sure my stuff is sourced. I, I don't do anything it's that's- factual. It's factual. And it's factual. And, and there are people from Facebook that go through my stuff and they look at it. And I know this because they contacted me and they've called me on the phone and we've had conversations. And those have been- surprisingly useful conversations. Then I understood that at the end of the day, they are an American company working within capitalism and they want to make money and I'm making them a lot of money. I'm good for them. I, I, I'm i very, very good for them. So so um, I've been lucky. So I have no problem with Instagram. My, my goal is to get to a million on Instagram and to have enough money to be able to provide for a family. I want to be able to have, like, I'm happy I don't necessarily even want to be rich, but if I can do this, cover news stories and just make enough money to provide for a family, you know, two, three kids, uh, a house, maybe one or two cars. I'm good with that. I don't need anything else. Let's so that's one my... or two, one or two nice cars. Let's uh, <laughs> I, I maybe, cars maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe an average uh, family van and, and also an exotic, <laughs> an exotic vehicle. Uh, that's still two vehicles, right? You got to balance it. hundred percent. I love the Camaro. Camaro is a car I like. That's that's Daddy's car, and uh, I also love the uh, I also love the Jeep. Nice military green Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. A Top nice off. safe safe vehicle for the family, right? And yeah, the, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> the Camaro. Well, they can get inside the Jeep if they want. You going rag top with the Camaro or a convertible with the Camaro? Not necessarily. No, no, no. The, as long as I got convertible on the Jeep, I'm cool. I would get okay. the Jeep before I get the Camaro. I love Camaro though. Camaro's nice. Okay. Um, but yeah, so it, so for me, that's my goal is to be able to. I would say by the middle of next year, like once I launch the website, we'll see how things are going. Uh, but by the end of next year, I want to be able to to really just this is this is sustaining my my life. I don't have to you know do anything else. So those are my goals. Yeah, I know that was long, but those are my goals. No, those are <laughs> those are great goals. I remember the first time I was exposed to goal setting when I first started in the financial industry. I get shipped off to the middle of Winnipeg, which is in the center of Canada. It was 44 below zero. And I was thinking, what did I do wrong to get shipped off here for training? You know, I managed to qualify. I watched pursuit of happiness and watch will smith qualify uh, for his financial so i went through the yes. same process went off for this training and it was a 10-day program for this company that i started with and they provided free you know free hotel meals everything because we qualified but winnipeg in the 44 below and then one of the first exercises we had was this goal setting with the vision board and i put a picture of this couple dining at a restaurant and the guy says what what's with the couple dining at the right you know i cut it out of the, the magazine pasted it on the center of my vision board and i said well to be honest if if i never had to eat my wife's cooking again i said that would be one of my goals to be able to eat out for dinner every day nice I now like it's that. now it's my ex and now i eat out every day for dinner <laughs> well look at that right but everybody has different goals you know i was just talking yeah. to someone else we we um interviewed here and he brought up winston churchill so oh. it was, uh, yeah, I can tell you about that story offline, tell you a little background on that, but he's from uh, the UK and he's now in New Zealand. But I guess, uh, Phil, it, to wrap this up is, you know, congrats on your success. Let's see if we can do our little bit to help move you to, you know, at least another couple notches up the ladder closer to your your Thank goal you. there of a uh, hundred thousand on Instagram. You know, if you're listening to this on uh, Apple, there's no video, so it'll be in the description. You know, click on the link, follow Phil. He's got lots of great news that the mainstream media doesn't want to share, and uh, these are things that they don't tell you. What Phil? They don't tell you what? They don't tell you on the five o'clock news, baby. That's it. Thanks Mr. a million. Taxes. The side <laughs> hustle, side hustle. I appreciate you. Won't forget you as one of the earliest supporters before 100,000. And uh, I really appreciate the support and everybody you said who's watching and supporting from your end of the country. And um, I can't wait to see you guys this weekend. Let's uh, let's do it up. And thank you very much for having me on. First awesome. of many. All right. Later. Let me bring you up to speed. Let me bring you up to speed. I'll get her to cut that out at the beginning. She'll All do right. like, uh, let me bring you, bring you, bring you up to speed, speed, speed. Do a little rap uh, edit on it. I like that. My my son does that kind of stuff with. Uh, oh, does he? Yeah. He's, oh, he's yeah. On, I remember you showed me, actually. I, yeah, a couple of his of songs. Stuff. It's good. It's top notch. But he, he'll he have fun with it, especially because nice. you're, you're a musician. See, that's, what another... I, that's what I want, man. I want that son who I can just work with. You know, I'll be like, hey, man, cut that up. Yeah, they're That's they're they're amazing on that digital stuff, right? I know they really keep you like up to speed. <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, they it's keep true. you on your toes, man. Even for me with my nephew, you know. So. Yeah, I, I had an uncle growing up, man. He was the coolest dude, right? Did all kinds of stuff your parents wouldn't let you do, and. Yeah. You know, tried to yeah. get you to smoke weed when you were eight, just to see how stupid you could be. <laughs> it's <was> crazy. <laughs> I don't know if That's Isaiah, funny. I might have been a bit younger, but it's all. It's wow, all really? Crazy. I tried first time when I was 12. Yeah, I, I was think in, we were I down around that States. age. Yeah, I was in the States. So I still remember we were, me and my brothers were worried. My uncle used to watch us because my mother was working two, three jobs all the time. And I think he got us high. And I might have been, wow. like you said, 12. And, and, and then we were, I still remember, you know, you get that feeling right in your loopy. And I said, I said, my brother said to me, he goes, he goes, mom's going to find out. I'm like, how? He goes, he goes, she always says that little bird told me like, you know, how'd you know, mom, a little bird told me. Little birdie you know told me. We spent the next two hours ripping apart the apartment, looking for that fucking bird. And I'm like, what bird? That's good. We're pulling on the curtains. Where's the bird? How is she going to find out that bird? Where are you hiding? That is hilarious. remember exactly where we were. And, and were you guys, were you guys going to like kill the bird? Oh, yeah. It was like Thanksgiving, <laughs> man, with Tweety Bird, you know. That's a good story. I like that story. I don't That's know how many first, times I told that, but it's... The first I got high story. I like that. 
Oh, the first I got high story. There's there's a whole news channel or a whole uh, YouTube I like channel that. right there. That's a good one. That's a whole segment right there. That'd be a good one. Like our podcast, our name doesn't even have anything to do with our company, right? We just want to bring on entrepreneurs and you know grow a following. Same as you do. You bring on listeners and catch one of your one of your reels or one of your Instagram posts and they're like, wow, you know, I like this guy. He's authentic. He's honest. You know, th- this is real stuff. And you can tell you, you mentioned there that you weren't quite left wing, not right wing. You're kind of down the middle, but I get that from your reels that you're impartial and you're just bringing the news, which I wish the main That's street great. news would do because yeah. I don't watch the news. Well, I haven't, I've never owned a TV. Not missed much. Yeah. And you know, I catch my stuff on YouTube, but it's all the mainstream stuff. It's like, man, that's enough. Yeah. No, no, you're right. You're right. It's good. Good to hear that. I'm glad. Because sometimes people look, it's, people say like, oh, you're so biased. I'm just like, am I? I don't know. Sometimes no, you no. don't know. Like, you're like, I don't you're know. not biased. You just bring the truth. And if the truth is, if the truth is biased, so be it. Like, so be it. That's it. That's yeah, basically. Break that one I, down, man. Yeah. If the well, truth hurts. So- Exactly. It does. And it's offensive to a lot of people. But um, once I launch the next uh, chapter, um, I'd love to come back on the show and announce the next movement with you. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do round two. The the yeah. uh, the release. Sounds good. What, is that what they call it? The release or the... Uh... Yeah, we can call it that. Yeah, the release. Well, let, let's do it in Toronto. We'll have a little crowd there. We're trying to... I mean, there's 270 tickets at the uh, Yuck Yucks in Toronto on the Monday night. Oh, nice. That's where we're doing our event. So I don't know how many we're going to get out there, but, you know, wow. come out and we'll we'll introduce you from the uh, from the stage. We'll say we've oh, got be special great. guests. Pull out your phones. If you're on Instagram, go to Pro Main Show. You know, let's get another 100 or 200, however many are going to be there. Let's see if they can announce it at the Jays game. Wow, that'd be crazy. Oh, you know what we should do? Hashtag Pro Main Show. Get a giant... Um, uh like a giant poster and we'll put it in the window oh wow like when this sunday yeah like i don't know if you're allowed to do that kind of stuff well i do have an at pro main show logo how big so i can get like two i can by get two. that done but two, two feet by three but i don't know if we're allowed to allowed to do that that's okay don't even worry about it i'll just be happy to be there and we'll have a good time you know what we'll do like a lot of people do in the city here, you're not allowed, you got to get a permit to post signage on a building. So what a lot of people do is they just hang it where the curtains are. So it's oh. not on the window. Oh, that's it's smart. Not on the window, but I'll read the rules. We'll ask them at the counter. I'll, I'll try and find out here in the next day or two, whether or not we can put something in the window. Cool. That sounds good. Looking forward to it. Or we just throw like this guy used to go to the hockey games Car dealer in uh, Vancouver, one of the most successful guys here. He owned a dealership. We had a handful of business cards, like a thousand business cards. Yeah. Had five uh, percent off or something. He used to take every time somebody scored, he'd take a handful and just throw them into the crowd, and they would just. Wow, really? Yeah, maybe we do that nice. out the window at the ball game and get tossed. Oh, that'd be sick. That's get a good tossed. One. Side hustle, pro main show, side hustle, Mister Taxes. Wow, what are all these cards? <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. Little, what do they Sports call that? Um, guerrilla marketing. That's called guerrilla marketing. Yeah, guerrilla marketing. Like the guys from One Eight Hundred got junk. They put giant blue wigs on. Yeah. For a month, they all wore giant blue wigs leading up to Halloween one year, and oh. they were all over the news. One Eight Hundred got junk. They do half a billion a year now. Wow, it's crazy. They they have good advertisement. Yeah, I know the guy. He's a he's a dragon now on Dragons Den. Brian Scudamore. Is he really? Yeah, he's a local guy. He's he's going to be on the next season. Whether I don't know if it started, but he's already filmed some episodes. I don't know if wow. they aired, but he's yeah, he's the next dragon. It's crazy. That's crazy. His office is just up the street. I, I've met him at lots of events because we're on the franchise association. They're a lot bigger than we are, but you get to meet all these big guys. It's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. And you're you're out in BC, right? If I remember yeah, right. Yeah, Vancouver. Yeah. Nice, nice. Could be worse. Oh yeah, I love. I, I went to Vancouver once. I loved it. Beautiful I came place. I came once in 96, dig, didn't go back. Oh, really? Yeah, I nice. came out here in February and there was no snow. And I'm like, where's the snow? They're like, it doesn't snow here. I'm like, it doesn't snow here. Yeah, that's right. It's crazy. It's nice, man. I like Vancouver. It's a beautiful city. I think I think I'm due for another trip, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, hit it, hit us up, man. Yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll have a beer. Yeah, bring, bring the wife if you want. And uh, I'll drag mine out. She doesn't like to go out and party. She's... We don't drink, but uh, I used to. I think they're both <laughs> Filipino, right? 
My, my, my mom's from Hong Kong. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I thought for some reason. Asian, both Asian. Let's go there. Both Let's Asian, go that yeah. Way. yeah. Both Asian. Yeah. I'm Asian Great too. Women. I'm Asian too, a little bit. I'm just Caucasian. <laughs> I like that. That's a good one. You never heard that one? No, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Hey, man, well, we'll see good. you. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure and get you the raw footage so you can use awesome. it to cut up yourself. Sounds but great. Then we'll get yeah, you a I'll copy. definitely be posting. I'll definitely be posting. I'll get you a copy then. of the, uh, a copy of the uh, podcast. If you so want, post, post the event Monday night. Tell people if they want to follow you, come out to the event Monday. We can get a hey, for uh, for followers on the Pro Main show. Let's offer a, a comp ticket. Okay, cool. They got to message you and then say, "Hey, I just need your name and email. We'll put you on the guest list." And that's yeah. for Monday night, the thirtieth at Yuck Yucks. Cool. Let's do that. Let me know today, and I'll I'll get that out you or want, whenever. Yeah. Let's. Uh, you want to shoot a, a quick uh, clip on that? I'll cut it out and send it to you. Sure. So yeah, uh, let's I'm do telling, it now. So what am I? What am I saying again? So I'm saying uh, this I is don't know. You just get... just follow my lead, man. Just follow. Oh my sure. Lead. I'm like, hey, okay, cool. let's let's kick it off, man. Let's <laughs> boom, 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 boom. No. Uh, Hey, Phil, thanks for being on the show today uh, no on the Side Hustle, Side Hustle podcast. And we're going to be meeting up in Toronto. We're going to the ball game, But more importantly, Monday night, September 30th at Yuck Yucks from 7 till 10 p.m. We're putting on an event here for business entrepreneurs, professionals, those uh, aspiring to be entrepreneurs. And uh, Phil, I think you have a special offer for your listeners. Well, I do. Um, all you guys got to do is just send me a message and we'll have uh, some comp tickets for you. You want to come out Monday night to Yuck Yucks and we'll get you some free tickets and you got a spot. So enter Pro Main Show to win. Yeah, go to Pro Main Show on Instagram and we, we have Justin Nickel and oh, Ryan, 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 Ryan. He's going to kill me. I don't have his name on the top of my head, but two top comedians from out West are going to be traveling with us. It's a 12 city show, but uh, more importantly, we're going to be, uh, Hosting Phil here at Yuck Yuck, September 30th. Reach out. Just get your name and email to Phil. We'll make sure you're on the guest list. Uh, but international rules, you got to be on the Pro Main Show uh, as a follower to uh, to get in. That's right. We'll see you there. Things what? Things they don't... Uh, what they don't show you on the 5 o'clock news. Bet they didn't talk about this on the 5 o'clock news. You heard it first here on the Pro Main Show. That's right. Awesome, guys. We'll see you in Toronto. All right. Yeah, we got to get that cut out and do it in a little clip. Cool. That'll be awesome. Let's uh, let's try and fill the room. And um, yeah, we're turning this into an annual event. We're doing 12 cities. Wow. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, That's we, go to the, we go to the comedy club just down the street from our office here. And me and one of the guys working with us said, hey, we work with all these mortgage. We work with about 7,000 mortgage brokers. And he said, let's do an appreciation event. I'm like, where? He goes, here. And it's a great venue, right? They have a theater style. They have a stage. Great for a little, we do a little presentation. And then it, we got the comedians on board and they're like, well, you know, I got somebody in Kelowna that could get us a club. Up. And then it was two cities and it turned into a 12 city tour. Wow. So I'll get, I'll get you the little clip from this and also um, the link for the site. And then I'll try and get a promo code. Okay. Why don't we call it a pro main code? That's right. Instead of a promo, a pro main. A main code. Love it. We 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 should just uh I'll get her to put a code on for a free ticket and call it pro main. Get to put yeah. pro main. What is what is the actual uh channel? Pro main show? Yeah, pro main show. Yeah, so we'll put pro main show as the uh as a code. I'll get her to do it right now because as soon as I log out here, I'm gonna be talking to the girls from the Philippines. Okay, cool. I get them to put a little uh give you that clip. You can edit it up however you want, and then um I'll get you the, the link and you say you got to use that code. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, awesome, man. This, this, All right. Uh, this is going to be awesome. We'll, we'll get the code going for uh, Toronto, Ottawa, and then our next trip back here. So they can okay. use that code if they're followers from Vancouver, from Ottawa, Toronto, Winnipeg, wherever they can use that code. Cool. That sounds good. We'll do that up. That was an afterthought, man. I like the way this works. Yes. It's working it's good. Okay, man. I'll let you get on with it. Thanks a million. Hey, Phil, we'll see you. All right, uh, yeah, it was we'll great. see you on Sunday. Sunday's three o'clock down in the lobby or 245 ish. Sunday at three. Okay. Sounds at three, good. So 245 ish. Or just call me when you if you get there early, whatever. We'll be there all after. All right, great. Yeah, no problem. Sounds good. See you there, man. All right, I'll see you there. Later. <laughs>